our goal is not only to treat patients, but to treat all patients. And I think the stem cell field, thanks to CIRM, has made it possible to address a concern that's been voiced there, that when we do get a therapy, maybe it won't work for all patients. Our goal is to make sure if we find something that's useful, everybody, regardless of your background, regardless of wh where you come from and what you can afford, you will benefit. You mentioned, the, thank you for that, and you mentioned the magic word of the day, right now, CIRM, because at the time of this taping, uh, the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine is about to wind down having uh, spent the money to create an effect in California, the strongest state enterprise for supporting stem cell research on the planet. Uh, but now there is a new proposition on the ballot in November, Prop 14. And if you can tell us a little bit more about what the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine has meant to the field in California, to the world, to Sanford Burnham Priebus. Um, I think it would be uh, good for everyone to understand uh, what has happened and what may happen if CIRM is continued and is able to get funding for another go round. I am a, a, a true believer, advocate of CIRM, the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine. And I, I think many, many people don't realize how pivotal this has been, not only to stem cell biology, not only to scientists in California, but to actually everyday life of citizens around the world, and I'll explain what I mean by that. CIRM entered the stem cell field at the earliest, earliest stages where we were trying to understand um, this biology. Now, it pulled in and attracted an enormous amount of very creative thinkers from many different fields of investigation. Admittedly, it is true that what we used to think about as stem cell biology was you take a cell, you put it somewhere, and things magically get better. But in the course of exploring that, we learned so much more that now is attributable to the concept of a stem cell, even though people don't realize it. And what I mean by that is when we recognized that the body had stem cells, that was a code word for saying the body is plastic, the body is resilient, the body accommodates. And that changed our whole way of thinking about life, about disease. Things were not foreordained. They were not rigid. They were not deterministic. If somebody had Alzheimer's disease, put them in an enriched environment because things can change. If somebody has Parkinson's disease, don't just put them in a wheelchair, teach them ballroom dancing. If you have kids with learning disabilities, give them enriched environments. Train, exercise. All of this, this concept that we now accept are the beneficiaries of the stem cell field. And we don't even think about it as having been that way, but it is, we accept that. And now we recognize that, well, maybe because of stem cells that do these various things throughout life, maybe they go, they do bad things sometimes if they, if they get the wording wrong. Maybe that's the reason we have cancers. So because of the stem cell field, we have a better understanding of cancer. And we're studying that. And sure enough, we realize that for some cancers, it's stem-like cells that cause it. And now we have drugs against it. Better drugs are a beneficiary of the stem cell field for, for things like cancer. Trying to recognize 
that genes might be able to be changed through something called genome editing. That happened because we had stem cells and we understood that you could expand young cells, change them, and then they would give the right progeny as opposed to the wrong progeny. Sometimes we just study them in a dish. Sometimes we put them into the body. But as a result, we are coming up with better drugs, better diagnostics, better prognostics. And we just understand life better. These are all the beneficiaries of the stem cell field that people don't recognize. It goes beyond whether or not I have a pot of cells that I can put into somebody's spinal cord or in somebody's heart. Yes, we'd like to do that, but we've gained so much more sophistication and knowledge about the human condition, and that comes from a, an appreciation of how the body's put together, that stem cells are one of the tools, and a lot of that insight came because you had an organization like CIRM that pushed us and funded us and drew in people with all different kinds of expertise and knowledge and viewpoints to talk to each other, work together, and think creatively. And if I think about what we've achieved over the last nearly 20 years, thanks to CIRM, and I think of what could happen over the next 20 years with our newfound sophistication, the, the prospects are limitless. Um, I'm so excited at moving on to the next area, and I am certainly hoping that CERN will be there to, to be our cheerleader. Evan, I have to say, I have learned so much, and I have so enjoyed having this conversation with you, as will the viewers. And I started off by saying, you got to have heart. Well, you evidence that, but you've got a great mind, too. And what... If I can understand it, everyone can understand it. <laughs> Clarity, I wouldn't change a word. Evan, I want to thank you for participating in this interview. And I look forward to speaking to you again in the future. And I very, wish you the very best with all of your research. Thanks so much, Bernie. It's been a lot of fun. Okay.